Hey everyone and welcome to our talk on adaptive and extendable numerical simulations with PlixiGel. My name is Michael Schlottke-Lahrkemper and together with Henry Granocha we would like to introduce you to TrixieGL, our numerical simulation package written in Julia, show you a little bit of what it's capable of and how you can use it for your own research and share some of our experiences with using Julia for numerical simulation science. Besides the two of us, I would like to acknowledge a few of our key contributors. There's Gregor Gassner, Andrew Winters, Eric Faulhaber, and Jesse Chan. So how did it all get started? Back in January 2020, Gregor Gassner and I sat together and evaluated the state of code in his research group. Our main code back then was Fluxo, fast parallel Fortran code for 3D fluid dynamic simulations. Um, and I call it the racehorse because it's a very fast code and very capable uh, for what it was built. And everything that is not absolutely vital is essentially trimmed away. So no fat. But on top of that, there were also a lot of uh, codes that I call the one trick ponies. So codes written for a singular purpose in a variety of languages and typically discarded after use. So uh, used for one project and then just forgotten about it. Obviously, that was not a very sustainable situation, and we tried to understand uh, what led to this. And some of the reasons why I identified were related to the fact that because Fluxel was so highly optimized, it was kind of hard to extend, especially for new people. Um, many features were tightly integrated, so you first had to understand a lot of existing code in order to understand how you can uh, add your own new additions to it. Uh, but on the other hand, once you added something, you also had to make sure it plays nicely with all the other features in there, which kind of increased the overhead if you just want to do some uh, quick and dirty experimentation. Besides that, it was also a little bit uh, cumbersome uh, for new users to get started because you had to get a Fortran compiler and then you had to compile all these dependencies first. And uh, so it was kind of hard to set it up. So um, we thought about uh, what we can do differently or what should we do. And as good numerical scientists, of course, the answer for us was write more code. Uh, but for this new code, we set out a couple of goals. So first of all, it should be extendable. Uh, that means it should be useful for both experimentation, for some implementing quickly some crazy idea you just had, uh, but also for it should be useful for sustainable research. Uh, we want to write papers with this. Second of all, it should be easy to use. There should be a decidedly low barrier for new users to get started, especially students should be able to pick up this new code and, uh, and start doing stuff with it without any assistance from us. And finally, of course, we want our new code to be fast. So it should be usable for laptop science, but also uh, capable of doing production simulations. And uh, this, of course, requires some high performance implementation with uh, support for adaptivity. Now, the question is, is this even achievable with a single code? Now, fast forward one and a half years, and uh, the code is now called Trixi, and it has grown into adaptive numerical simulation framework for hyperbolic PDEs. We have six core developers, a uh, number of external contributors, uh, the code base has grown to more than 30,000 lines of code and we actually had close to 20 students already using Trixi for either their in-class projects or for their thesis work and we've written two published papers with it. Uh, Trixi is also integrated into the Julia ecosphere and makes use of a, of a number of uh, really great packages to extend its capabilities. Now before we get into details of how you can use uh, Trixie Gel and how it's built up. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples of what you can do with it. This is an example of an acoustics simulation where we have an acoustic pulse emanating uh, from this point and then being reflected at these little cylinders here. It's a high order discontinuous Galerkin simulation on a high order curved unstructured mesh. A second example is uh, a Kelvin Helm. It's a simulation for a Kelvin Helmholtz uh, flow instability. This is also a classic fluid dynamics example. You have these little uh, vortices forming up here, um, and as you can see on the right-hand side of the video, uh, this is also done with adaptive mesh refinement. 
So the mesh is refined in regions where there's something interesting going on in the solution. And uh, final example, uh, this is a 3D simulation of a cold gas cloud that interacts with hot supersonic flow. This is an example um, from astrophysics actually. And uh, as you can see, you have uh, shocks forming here, which are also resolved uh, by the adaptive mesh refinement. Uh, and this is also done with a high order discontinuous Galerkin simulation, uh, in addition with some uh, positivity preserving limiters. Now, I will hand over to Henrik Ranocha, uh, who will uh, discuss a little bit about uh, how Trixi is built up and show some examples of how you can extend it for your own research. Thank you very much, Michael. So now let's have a look at Trixie in action. If you are watching this online, you can come back to the slide and enter the URL that's shown here. It will bring you to the Git repository that we've set up for this talk, which contains the slides of Michael, this Jupyter notebook that I present to you, and also additional information about Trixie. In general, Trixie comes with a decent amount of examples, which are sorted by the different mesh types. So if you're using Trixie and then examples here, it will bring you to the um, folder containing the different examples and subfolders and right now in the moment we have 193 examples so if you're looking for something if you have an idea for a setup hopefully there's something sufficiently close to your case so that you don't need to start from scratch. In general in Trixie we want to solve partial differential equations PDEs in particular hyperbolic conservation laws and for this we use the method of lines that is, we create a spatial sum discretization at first, and then we pass that to an ODE solver, an ordinary differential equation solver. And for this, in Trixie, we use the differential equations ecosystem, in particular, ordinary DPQ. The spatial sum discretization is the main structure of Trixie that you will use as a user, and it has different important fields. So the first one is the mesh type. We have different mesh types, for example, Cartesian meshes or curvilinear ones, we have um, structured meshes and unstructured meshes, and we have also meshes that enable you to use adaptive mesh refinement, AMR, for example, using PForest. The next big ingredient in Trixie is the solver, and by that we don't mean something like a linear solver, but the basic discretization type. For example, discontinuous clear and spectral element methods, or also other variants of DG methods or finite difference methods. Then the setup must be completed by specifying the physics, which are here mainly given by the type of equations that you use, which can be, for example, linear reaction equations or compressible oil equations or even MHT equations and a lot of more equations that we have in Trixie. And then finally, you also need to pass, of course, some initial conditions, boundary conditions and different source terms to complete the setup of the spatial sum discretization. Then you'll get an ODE and can pass that to ordinary DVQ, for example, using optimized from the methods which have been optimized for hyperbolic problems that you're interested in. We can use the callback infrastructure of ordinary DFQ for additional functionality. For example, AMR is realized using callbacks and also input-output is realized using callbacks, positivity preserving limiters, and so on and so forth. So now, in our theory, let's have a look at some code. At first, we need to load all the packages that we use, so ordinary DFQ and Trixie. And then we start to set up everything by creating the equations object. Here we will use linear scalar advection equations in two space dimensions with a given advection velocity so that we will have transferred to the upper right corner. Next, we specify the solver type, which will be here a discontinuous Gehurkin spectral element method, polynomials of degree 3 and the lux Friedrichs flux as the surface flux. Next, we will use a mesh, which is a tree mesh in our case here, which is a Cartesian mesh on a square domain in 2D, but it will enable us to use AMR later on. Having created all these parts, we can bundle them together in a summer discretization, and we additionally pass an initial condition. Here we will use an initial condition which is already defined in Trixie, which will be a sine wave here in our example. We create an ODE problem out of it and solve that using a method from ordinary DFQ, which is of course quite fast. So, since we've created some plot recipes, in order to visualize your solution, all you need to do is using plots and then plot solve, and you will get a plot of the solution at the final time, which is a sine wave, as I said before. If you want to change anything of the setup, well, you just need to write additional Julia code. Setups in Trixie 
are just plain Julia code. So if you want to change anything, you need to write plain Julia code. For example, if you want to change the initial condition, you just need to write a function which accepts the spatial coordinate x, the time t, and the equations, and it needs to return the initial condition at that point at space and time. So let's do that and create a new summer discretization, but now the summer discretization gets the new initial condition that we've just defined. Summer discretize it and solve the LE, and now we have a Gaussian pulse, which is advected, or not a Gaussian pulse, a cosine pulse, which is advected from the center at first and then to the top right corner using periodic boundary conditions. So the next big step is AMR. AMR is realized as a callback, so let's recap briefly what a callback is. If you have, say, an explicit from the CUDA method, you do a step of this method, and then you can apply a callback function. And for this uh, method here, you could also say you do five steps of your own CUDA method, then apply a callback, and the callback will look at your numerical solution, it will adapt the numerical solution and the mesh accordingly. So let's have a look how we do that in Trixie. At first, you need to create an AMR controller, which basically um, takes an indicator. Here, the indicator is just the numerical solution itself for the scalar problem. And then it will return uh, whether the mesh shall be refined or coarsened by determining a given level that the mesh refinement should have at that point. We pass that to an AMR callback so that we have an AMR callback. And next, all we need to do is set up a semi-discretization. For this, we use uh, AMR mesh in the sense that we create an initial refinement level, which is rather coarse, because the AMR callback will take care of refining the mesh locally for us. And then everything else is just as before to set up the spatial semi-discretization. And next, we only need to change this part here. We pass the callback to solve. And then we can create our AMR solution on the fly, the cosine pulse as before, but now the mesh has adapted on the fly accordingly. So some advanced features of Trixie that you can also use are basically given by the strength of Julia. Because in Trixie we use generic Julia programming, you can also use a lot of tools from the Julia ecosystem. For example, you can use forward diff for forward mode automatic differentiation to calculate Jacobians of a nonlinear semi-discretization. So here we take a nonlinear semi-discretization of a nonlinear conservation law, compressible Euler equations in this example, and can rather easily compute the Jacobian of this semi-discretization in Trixie. Similarly, you can use measurements.jl for some version of uncertainty propagation. So here we take an advection velocity with a mean value of 1.0, but an uncertainty of 0.1 here, create a linear scalar advection equation, and then our type of the advection velocity is a measurement. So next we create a tree mesh as before, our DG sand solver, and now since Trixie uses internal caches, you need to tell the summer discretization that it should set up the caches uh, with an element type of U measurement float 64. So having done that, you can create your ODE problem as before, solve that using ordinary GFQ, and you get error bars around your solution coming from the uncertain initial uh, advection velocity. So that's it. Brief first tour of Trixie. And yeah, if that's interesting for you, if you want to revisit this, just go to the repository that we've set up containing the slides here and additional information. And now Michael will tell you whether we've been successful in our goals that he's set at the beginning. Thank you very much, Hendrik. So let's see how we fared with using Julia for numerical simulation science. And I'll be starting with looking at performance. One thing most people notice when starting with Julia is that there is a considerable startup latency. So in the case of Trixie, that means it takes roughly 45 seconds until you get your first result and a little bit over a minute to get your first plot. The second and subsequent results are much, much faster already. And the reason for this is that code gets compiled at the first use and the cache code is used at all the subsequent runs. You can get around this limitation a little bit during development, at least by using the revised JL package, which makes development much, much nicer and turnaround times a lot faster. 
So what about writing fast code? Efficient Julia code requires a new kind of performance intuition, especially when you're coming from other compiled languages like C++ or Fortran. Everything you know about performance is still relevant uh, when coding in Julia, but on top of that, you need to make sure that you avoid any unwanted allocations and most importantly, that you avoid type instabilities. The good thing is that there are many Julia-based tools available for code introspection and performance in optimization, which help you achieving the fast code. So let's look at some numbers. Um, here we compared uh, our uh, Fortran-based Fluxo code that I mentioned in the introduction against uh, Trixie Gel. We were looking at a realistic example. It's a 3D simulation of the compressible Euler equations on a curved mesh. And uh, we're comparing it for two different versions of the numerical discretization scheme, once with flux differencing and once with weak forms. The blue curves are for Fluxo and the red curves are for Trixie. And we're in the left side, we're looking at the time it takes to run uh, one time derivative. Uh, so lower is better. And as you can see, Trixie is uh, faster than Fluxo in all cases. On the right-hand side, you can also see a relative performance comparison of the two codes. And you can see that Trixie requires about 40 to 50% of the time that Fluxo does. Now, I do not want to claim that uh, Julia is faster than Fortran, but what I want to make, what I want to bring home with this uh, example here is that when comparing Julia and Fortran for, a, let's say, a realistic uh, performance uh, example, that it does not really matter which language you use, but essentially how much time you spend in optimizing the code, which I think is a very good result for Julia. Regarding parallel performance, so far we've uh, mostly used shared memory parallelization, which works very well. Uh, there are not many MPI-based uh, parallel uh, simulation codes in Julia out there yet. Um, it's still an open question for us how to integrate MPI without creating a, some sort of Franken code that doesn't look very Julian anymore. Um, but there is some momentum from projects like uh, the Climate Machine, who are uh, already investing a lot of time in building a massively parallel MPI code. So in terms of parallel performance, I would say the verdict is still out. Now, what about ease of use when using Trixie or Julia? Um, the built-in package manager in Julia, PKG, handles basically everything. Um, you can install Trixie, the dependencies, the post-processing tools with literally two lines of codes. So these two lines of codes I put here, you can execute them in the REPL and it will install everything you need. You basically are set up to get started with your first simulation. And this ease of use also extends to binary dependencies. So the package manager, is also able to install pre-compiled binaries. Uh, this can be used, for example, for uh, libraries or executables. And I would like to make one example that is actually uh, used in practice in Trixie. So this is a simulation with an adaptive uh, mesh, uh, on an adaptive curved mesh in 3D. Uh, and for the adaptivity, we use the C library pforest. And to, to use this, um, we we created a small wrapper package, pforestjl, which you can install using the package manager just as you install any other package. And it will automatically install OS-specific binaries on your computer. It works on Linux, on Mac OS and Windows. There is no installation. You don't have to have a compiler on your machine. It just works out of the box. And I think this is extremely nice. Um, besides uh, handling binary dependencies, the package manager is also great for creating reproducible compute environments. Uh, all information about packages, their versions, their dependencies are contained in the two files project toml and manifest toml. And with that, it's very easy to set up repositories where you can allow users or other scientists to reproduce uh, your results. We've actually used this already for the two papers we've written uh, with Trixie uh, and for a couple of talks, including this one, and it works very, very well. Now, finally, let me uh, talk a little bit more about extendability. What's already uh, well known in, in the Julia community is that multiple dispatch together with just ahead of time compilation um, ensures that there is really no difference between standard library code, 
the package code and your own code. But what does it mean in practice, really? Um, for us, the main benefit here is that you can very easily extend existing functionality, um, remain fast on the way, and uh, still focus really only the particular parts that you're interested in. So this is now from an example that we actually did uh, a while ago. Uh, these are two functions. I, I reduced the complexity a little bit, but they look similar to that in Trixie gel. Uh, they're called, uh, it's called calc volint uh, to calculate the volume integral. And there are essentially two methods available. And the only difference here is in the, in the argument type of the volume integral type. Uh, one is for the weak form and the second one is for the strong form. So what if you would like to uh, write, a, what if you have an idea for um, a new version of, uh, for a specific, let's say, performance optimization uh, that you can come up with? Uh, and, and you want to make sure that you only implement it specifically for the case that you're interested in. So this is something that uh, Hendrik did a while ago. And it's very easy by just adding a new type annotation. For example, here for the equations part, you just say, hey, I have this little nifty function where I basically hard-coded everything related to compressible Euler equations in there. Um, this only works for Euler, but in that case, it works much better than the existing functions. And you can just write this new method, and when you run your next Euler simulation, it will pick up your user code, and there is no difference to, uh, between your code and the code in the Trixie package. Um, and everything gets inlined, everything is fast, and you didn't even have to touch any of the existing functions in Trixie JL. We've uh, used this ability to extend uh, Trixie and Julia code uh, very easily in the past. So this is an example of a flow gravity simulation um, with shock capturing and adaptive mesh refinement. So this is actually a multi-physics simulation where we have a flow solver uh, running independently of a gravity solver, and they exchange information in each time step. And um, I mean, we had the single physics uh, solvers up and running, of course, before. Uh, so the only thing we needed to do was add the multi-physics coupling part. And this was literally achieved in less than 350 lines of code, which I think is really, really amazing if you think about it. And we've actually published this result also in uh, one of our papers. Okay, coming to an end, uh, let me summarize. Uh, Trixie Gel is a uh, Julia package for adaptive uh, high order numerical simulations. Um, in the design of uh, Trixie, we focus on extendability, uh, ease of use, and performance, uh, which is also reflected in our, um, in let's say, our, our own workflow. Uh, we have the saying make it work, uh, make it nice, make it fast. Uh, Julia is uh, very well suited for uh, simulation sciences. There are some small caveats um, with respect to parallel performance mainly, but we hope to answer uh, these open questions in the future. Uh, for example, we're uh, at the moment we're looking at adding uh, MPI parallelization to Trixie. Uh, we're always looking uh, to add more physics and maybe um, we want to branch off into some GPU uh, acceleration as well. Thank you very much for your interest. Uh, if, you, uh, if you would like to get in touch, um, there's a Trixie Slack workspace uh, that you can just join, uh, or you can just go to the Trixie repository on GitHub and open an issue. Thank you very much.